For weeks, Mitt Romney has been getting a lot of uh, slack uh, for those now infamous 47% remarks. But it's not until now that he's actually saying they were flat out wrong. Listen to the original comments he made at the closed door fundraising dinner in May in Boca Raton, Florida, and how his response has evolved in the days and weeks since they first surfaced. There are 47% of the people who vote for the president no matter what. All right, there are 47% who are with him, who are dependent upon government, who believe that, that they are victims, who believe that government has a responsibility to care for them, who believe that they are entitled to health care, to food, to housing, to you name it. You know, it's not elegantly stated. Let me put it that way. I'm speaking off the cuff in response to a, a question. The president's approach is attractive to people who aren't not paying taxes because, frankly, my discussion about lowering taxes isn't as attractive to them. I recognize that, that those people who are not paying income tax are, are going to say, gosh, this, this uh, uh, provision of, that Mitt keeps talking about lowering income taxes, that's not going to be real attractive to them. And, and those that are dependent upon government and those that think government's job is to redistribute, I'm, I'm not going to get them. The question of this campaign is not who cares about the poor and the middle class. I do. He does. The question is who can help the poor and the middle class. I can. He can't. He's proven it in four years. In this case, I said something that's just completely wrong. And uh, I, I absolutely believe, however, that my life has shown that I care about 100%. And, and that's been demonstrated throughout my life. And this whole campaign is about the 100%. All right, let's discuss what we just heard in our strategy session. Uh, joining us are CNN political contributors Roland Martin and Republican strategist Mary Matlin. Uh, Mary, I remember the day after you came on, strongly defended uh, Mitt Romney uh, when those remarks were released uh, by Mother Jones magazine. How do you feel now that you see he's backed away from them completely? He's backed away from the complete and utter and despicable distortion of his clear meaning. It does not, and the, the, the distortion is that he doesn't care about people, which does not comport with his personal life. He gives 20 to 30 percent of his uh, uh, annually to charity. And in Massachusetts, he balanced the budget, provided a surplus, which it, it resulted in an explosion of jobs. So to say he doesn't care or he doesn't want to get this economy growing, it's a tenet of conservatism. It's a cons it's a tenet, uh, the main tenet of his uh, uh, of his policies that these 23 million people are still out of work and one out of every six Americans is in poverty. It is not kind. It is not compassionate to keep those people in poverty, to keep this economy growing at 1.3 percent. That's what he was saying. That's what he meant. And to, it's been distorted to say he doesn't care. And I'm, I'm still I defend him to the end about what, <laughs> what he really meant. But maybe what he meant, but he, he does say, and I'll bring Roland in a, in a moment, but what he actually said uh, last night to Sean Hannity was the way the words came out of his mouth, not the the way they were interpreted, but mm -hmm. the words that actually came out of his mouth, he said, were completely wrong. He basically apologized for what actually he said. He said he had given a thousand speeches, thousands of interviews. In this particular case, what he said was completely wrong. He wasn't blaming the interpretation. Mm -hmm. Well, Roland, may I? What he did no, is ask the question for you. you. It wasn't to, for me. Oh, okay. The, You'd have to be a distortionist or an ignoramus to not understand what he was saying. He was conflating the political fact that, that Obama consistently gets 47 percent in the polls. And he conflated that with, with the philosophical fact about is it better for people to be taxpayers or to, not, or to be, uh, take, have government depending on, to, to depend on government. You, you have to be distorted. He, if he conflated those two things and you didn't understand what he was saying, and that was a room full of people who clearly understood what he was saying, the reason the president has to keep talking about this is because he cannot run on his record where 23 million people cannot get jobs, where one out of six people live in poverty, where the cost of everything is going up from health care premiums that he promised would go down to energy, and the value of, of the life savings has been depleted. The hey, Obama Wolf. recovery is worse than the Bush recession. Median hey, incomes hey, have declined at twice the All rate right. in, the Bush ahead, reco in the Obama recovery. Wolf, the reason you hear Mary having to struggle to explain what we know exactly what Mitt Romney said is because she's trying to get away from what he actually said. The fact that he had to sit there and say, I was wrong, is an admission 
that he has been hurt by those particular comments. Now, we can sit here and try to, oh, let me explain or interpret what he said. I heard him very clearly. I think Mitt Romney is very smart. He's very clear. He mixed nothing up. And the reason he had to apologize is because he knew it has been hurting him. He knew it hurt his campaign. And the bottom line is there are many people who are supporters of his who are in that 47%. So I say, Mary, no need to have to explain Mitt Romney away. As a, as a day is out, we call the wobble. And that's what you're doing right now. Just say, Mitt, you screwed up. No, Roland, he I'm did. not going to say that because I'm okay. going to say that you would have to be either hate Romney or be an ignorant to him. think that he was including Social Security recipients or Medicare recipients or veterans in there. Those are insurance forced insurance programs by the government. That's our money that they're supposed to be returning to us for our retirement. Security. So this smart guy that he was not including that. So this How smart about guy, your guy's this, so smart. But, you no, didn't no, no, build one, one, one it. Second, the second, the actually, private economy is doing well, Mary, fine. Mary, 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 here's the deal. I don't I don't jump to these boxes back and forth. The president's also your president. He's all of our president. The bottom line is here. If I'm listening to a guy who ran Bain Capital, who's extremely smart, who can run the numbers, who's very articulate, who can break these issues down, I take him at his word. When I watched that video, it was all clarity. The bottom line is he was wrong. Here's the deal, Mary. He said it himself. So you don't have to no longer explain it because he gave you an out. He admitted he was wrong. So no need to go back to trying to, oh, let me fix it all up. No need. He messed up. He screwed up. All right. Uh, we, we, I think we've exhausted this part of the conversation. But a quick question, uh, Roland, to you. Why didn't the president of the United States in the debate bring up the 47 uh, percent comment? Because if he would have, I suspect Mitt Romney would have said that night what he said to Sean Hannity last night, that it was a screw up. He shouldn't have said it. He was completely wrong. And if he would have said that in the debate, that would have changed so much of the coverage, so much of the analysis, the fallout. From that Got me. Look, I don't know why the president didn't ask Mitt Romney why did the Republicans in the Senate block the veterans bill providing jobs for veterans when they have an extremely high unemployment rate as well. It's a whole bunch of stuff the president, frankly, didn't bring up. And so I don't know why he didn't bring that up. I guess they chose not to do so. I think it was a mistake. I also think it was a mistake that neither candidate had a substantive conversation about poverty in this country and about what has happened to people who are in, who are middle class, who don't want to be in poverty, but who recognize that with the tough economy, when losing those 3.47 million jobs between July 2008 and the inauguration, it still has had an impact on our economy. So we could say a whole bunch of stuff should have been brought up. So I don't know why, but it should have been brought uh, up. If I he didn't, Mitt has apologized, so we'll see what's next. Mary, one uh, quick response from you. Uh, what if Mitt Romney would have said during the debate what he said to Sean Hannity last night? What would have been the fallout for him saying he was completely wrong in talking about the 47 percent the way he did? The, the articulation of conflating a political number with the policy prescription to get people off of the dependence on the government into the job market is the, a, a completely, it completely comports with his philosophy, with a growth economy. It is this president who doesn't care about people, or he oh, yes, would have he does, focused Mary, on stop. jobs instead of health care oh, for he two does. years. He cares about the people who don't have health care. He cares about really? the people who have pre-existing conditions. He cares about the people, Mary, who are sitting there having to go to emergency rooms because they don't have health care. So please stop with the he doesn't care. The fact of the matter, he does. You simply disagree with him on some policies, but he no, does care. No, on all policies. All right. This is okay. the worst recovery in the history of, of this country. All right. On, on, on the economic well, policies, I'm sorry. yes. I'm sorry your former boss left it that way, and he's a fellow Texan, but unfortunately he did. Mary, it was screwed up when he walked Roland, in. Uh, unfortunately, we're up against the clock. we got to leave it right there, but both Appreciate of you it, will Wolf. be back. We'll continue this conversation down the road.